Hi everyone, what's up? It's Joshua here with Alternative Brewing, and today we're here to check out the latest handheld portable espresso maker from Wakeko, the Pico Presso. Now, straight up, I wanna say how genuinely impressed I am with the caliber of the espresso that the Pico Presso can produce. And in every way, Wakeko have really honed in on what constitutes specialty coffee. The Pico Presso provides an enjoyable, quality-focused process using current tools of the trade to brew a standard double espresso. Its clever pump design makes it both super compact and lightweight for an espresso brewer, as well as durable enough that it's ready for just about any adventure. Now, you can shop the full range of Wakeko products, including the Pico Presso, from this link up above, but now let's jump straight in and explore the full potential of this promising brewer. So straight out of the box, the Pico Presso comes in an EVA hard carry case. And I love that this is your whole espresso brewer right here in the palm of your hand. And this case feels like it could pretty well fall out of your backpack and down a mountain. And bar a few scratches to the case itself, I really couldn't see the Pico Presso coming to any harm at all. Now, when you unzip the case and remove the brewer, the Pico Presso weighs 350 grams and is only 10 and a half centimeters tall, but is a good seven and a half centimeters in diameter. And in true Wakeko fashion, all the additional accessories fit inside the Pico Presso quite neatly. Now found under the water chamber lid sits your steel tamper and the dosing ring, and then sitting inside the water chamber is a distribution tool and that cleaning brush. The water chamber itself will hold a maximum of 90 mils of water. And the only thing I don't really use is the brush, but otherwise everything else on the Pico Presso has been really carefully thought out with a gratifying attention to detail. Like the steel porter filter that has that knurling grip around the outside, making it easier to hold and unscrew. And then when you do, you'll find the foldable dosing cup sitting underneath the water dispersion screen and inside the 52 millimeter stainless steel filter basket. Now, this is a big change up from Wakeko's previous espresso brewers and makes a significant difference to the depth of flavor you can brew with a Pico Presso. Now the filter basket is tapered, so there will be a minimum dose that you can use, but it's really that maximum amount of coffee that you can dose into it, being 20 grams, that satisfies the double espresso brew ratio. So you have that opportunity to benchmark the extraction of any coffee that you use on the Pico Presso against that of an actual espresso machine. And that metal porter filter has two rubber discs as part of it. The first you can leave on here and it'll funnel the espresso you brew into a single stream into your cup but you can also easily remove this to then expose the bottom of that filter basket for a naked view of the espresso as it extracts out. Now, you could be watching for areas of improvements here, or you could just be watching because it looks so damn tasty. And that second cap is used to place the Pico Presso on after brewing so it catches all the drips. Now to begin brewing on the Pico Presso, a quick preheat of this water chamber is gonna help maintain a steady temperature of the brew water throughout the brewing process. And I suggest using water straight off the boil for your preheat and your brewing water for the best results. So leaving that water chamber to heat up, next we're gonna weigh out 20 grams of coffee and grind it to an espresso grind. And from my experience, it's bang on the same grind as I would use for the Flare Espresso Maker, the Bellman Espresso Maker, or even the Ranchilio Silvia Pro. And none of those use pressurized filter baskets. So what is critical to the Pico Presso that you get that grind size just right. Too fine and the espresso will never brew out and it'll be very hard to pump. Or too coarse a grind and it'll flow out far too quickly and the espresso won't end up very strong at all. And there is a good measurement I'll mention in just a bit on how you can gauge whether you have that grind size just right. But first, with your filter basket, we're gonna place that into our porter filter, dosing ring on top, and then add our coffee. So next, grab that WDT tool and swirl it inside the grounds. And WDT is short for Weiss Distribution Technique, and this works to create an even density of grounds in the porter filter, and also breaks up any clumps before your tamp. This, as well as other styles of distribution, promote the even flow of water through the bed of coffee for a balanced extraction of the grounds. Next, we're gonna leave the dosing ring on the porter filter while we apply the tamp. And in this way, you'll discover it guarantees a flat and even tamp every time. A clever design on Wakeko's part and great for the user as it eliminates any issues with an inconsistent tamp. 
From here, add the shower screen on top of the filter basket and then screw the portafilter assembly to the body of the Picopresso nice and tight. Then go ahead and fill the water chamber with boiling water and by leaving a small gap at the top, it's about 70 mils of water and this will get us pretty close to our target espresso yield of 40 grams out. And with the water chamber lid on, twist the pump to release it and then with that brewer over the top of your cup, begin pumping. Now it's at around eight to 12 pumps that I've consistently seen espresso appear on the bottom edges of the filter basket. And if it were way more than this, it would suggest that my grind was too fine. And if it brewed sooner than those eight to 12 pumps, then I would consider my grind to be too coarse. But after 12 pumps, or when I see that coffee just coming out, I wait for 10 seconds and that allows the coffee to pre-infuse in the basket. So when I begin pumping again, the espresso begins flowing naturally from the middle of the basket. And a good steady pump every second or so will continue to keep a steady stream of espresso flowing out. Now, you could pump faster, but it will get harder as the pressure rises in the peak espresso. And then there's really no way of knowing what pressure you're brewing at. So my guess is that if you do pump too fast, you're kind of getting a pressure profile that's climbing and falling. So as long as you keep a steady stream of espresso coming out, along with a consistent pumping, then you're probably somewhere better in the ballpark of a consistent, reasonable pressure. And looking at the coffee that's brewed from the Pico Presso, it has all the hallmarks of a good looking espresso. Great crema, a good viscosity in the shot, there's a rich dark color and a strong aroma. The flavor, cheers. That's good. That's really good. Like espresso good. And it's not that it's a $5,000 home espresso machine espresso, but it's pretty close. And for what the Pico Presso is, that's what impresses me so much. For such a compact and affordable brewer, I can see this becoming second nature to just pack it away into your bag for traveling. Now you could absolutely add some hot water to this for an Americano or a long black, and this espresso is more than enough to add milk to. So grab yourself a Nanofoma or the Bellman 50SS stovetop steamer and you'll be effortlessly making lattes that will turn heads in any campgrounds. And to discuss cleaning and turnaround time, this has to be the easiest and the cleanest filter basket I've ever had the pleasure of knocking a puck out of. It's always come out with no fuss, and then you can go ahead and wipe it dry. You can rinse all the parts off if you're done for the day, or go ahead, add some more coffee into the basket for another great espresso. And that's the Wakeko Peak Espresso for you. It's compact, reliable, and durable. And I say all these things, they're pretty relatable to some other brewers, but the espresso this brews, with the package that it comes in, Wakeko have really jumped the gap in their current lineup of brewers to not only create something that broadens Wakeko's appeal to make legitimate portable espresso brewers, but they've done it in a way that will see the peak espresso, I believe, remain current for some time. And also knowing Wakeko's love of attachments, I doubt we've seen the last of the Pico Presso's potential. So if you have any questions on this product, throw them in the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and that bell icon in your screen. That way you stay notified when we bring out new videos just like this every week. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.